So we're talking about PFAS. This is a family of several thousand synthetic chemicals uh, that are incredibly persistent. They don't naturally break down, and instead they tend to accumulate in the human body and in the environment. They've been used for decades to make products resistant to heat, oil, water. So you'll find them in things like nonstick Teflon pans, uh, firefighting foams, anti-stain carpets, even dental floss. Um, one of the PFAS experts I spoke to said, if you look for them, you will find them. So that's what happened. The French TV program Vert de Rage found alarming levels of these PFAS around two chemical plants just outside the French city of Lyon, where we're, where we're based. Um, and notably, the levels of PFAS in the Rhone River, immediately downstream of these plants, were over 36,000 times those found upstream. So this could have major repercussions for the drinking water that's pumped south of Lyon. Uh, some 200,000 people could be affected, and we're now waiting for further tests to assess whether people can uh, safely drink their tap water or not. Indeed. Well, tell us more about what impact they could have then on people's health. I mean, Lyon's a fair-sized city. It's like uh, France's second or third largest, according to most estimates. How bad is it? So it's France's third largest city, indeed. Um, but here we're talking about the, the towns that are south of Lyon. Um, studies have linked these chemicals to a range of health problems, uh, reduced immunity, things like uh, children not responding to vaccination and getting more diseases, um, thyroid dysfunction, hormonal problems, higher cholesterol, and very importantly, they're suspected of putting people at an increased risk of, risk of certain types of cancer, specifically kidney cancer and testicular cancer, but we're also seeing some studies link it to uh, breast cancer and prostate cancer, which are much more common. Um, but perhaps the scariest thing about PFAS is that they're essentially passed on from one generation to the next. Um, so these chemicals build up in our bodies, right? And a pregnant m uh, woman uh, in her body, it can cross the placenta, reach the fetus, and once the child is born, the mother, if she's breastfeeding, she's also unwittingly passing on this chemical burden to her child um, through her breast milk. So at this point, it's it's we're, we're finding more and more about these the, the health impacts of these chemicals, but it's not looking very pretty. No, it sounds alarming just in itself. But just before we let you go, Natalie, tell us, you know, what protective measures, given that, that so many of these chemicals are in everyday products, you mentioned from frying pans to the food we're eating, mm -hmm. how can we protect ourselves against this and what regulation is in place? Yeah, it's a very tricky part, isn't it? Um, because these substances are everywhere, uh, experts say what we really need to do is to just phase out production entirely of this whole class of chemicals. Um, but at a consumer level, what can we do? We can do small things like uh, avoid stain-resistant carpets and fabrics, just live with those stains. Uh, avoid non-stick pans, just, you know, do the dishes a little harder. Instead, use cookware that's made of cast iron, stainless steel, glass, or enamel. Uh, avoid microwave popcorn, apparently it's very bad for you. Um, and, Who'd have thought? Yeah. So yeah, generally avoid foods that are wrapped in greaseproof paper. Uh, try to limit your intake of takeaway meals, and that's probably good for your waistline as well.